Hey guys, welcome back to Bella Boo's Lunches. If you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. You guys, today is going to be a long video. So get comfy, get a snack, and sit back. And I'm going to show you all the things that we were eating last week for our dinners. So the first thing that I start with here is on Sunday nights, I prep for my salads. So I'm making my ranch. And here's my quick tips with my ranch. Use a packet. Don't use as much mayo as it calls for and use buttermilk. If you like like the restaurant style ranch, the runny stuff, that's what I'm going for and that's what you're gonna get if you just, just follow my tips. Okay, moving on. I prep my vegetables to put into my salad because I like a million bajillion vegetables in my salads. I want lettuce to be there, but I want it just to be like in there. I don't want the lettuce to take over the salad. Does that make any sense? Anyway. Maybe not. So I will cut up all of my vegetables and put them into containers. So that way when I'm going to make my salad, I just have to go in my fridge and pull out one or two containers and all my vegetables are there. Oh, I can do that because my containers have like little dividers inside of there. I'll link the containers in my Amazon store. These containers were actually, well, not these ones in particular, but a while back I had gotten containers sent to me from a company and they were divided like this and I loved them. I've ended up having to go back and rebuy quite a few of them because I think I've given away a lot of food to like family and friends and I just never got the containers back, which can you blame them? They're amazing containers. So I just went and repurchased them because they make my salad life so easy. Also, I use them for other things too, but they're really perfect for salads. So diced up all my peppers, all of my tomatoes. I had black olives left over from the week before, so I'm just going to pull those back out for when I need to make my salad. But look at how nice that is. So I pull out one container and I got three options right there. I love it. Okay, so let me just show you how I make my salad. I throw in a couple handfuls of lettuce and then I throw on top of that my toppings. So I'm doing both the peppers and then the tomatoes, the black olives, some dressing and then those sunflower seeds. I don't know why, but sunflower seeds are always on buffets at restaurants and I'm just trying to have a restaurant style salad. So there you go. I did pretty good, don't you think? One of our favorite things to make together is tacos. So I started by browning the beef. Bella started by making the dip. And for that, she mixed together sour cream and taco seasoning and then sliced up some black olives using an egg slicer. That's a mom hack for you. It makes slicing so much easier. And then she took refried beans, spread them out on a plate, and then took her sour cream and taco seasoning mixture and spread that on top of the refried beans and then started layering it. Now, if you're not going to be able to eat it all in one day, skip the lettuce part. But if you can eat it all at once, put the lettuce on there. We did it this time just for the fun, just to show you. And then we top it with the cheese, the tomatoes, and the black olives. Now back to my beef. I have drained it, strained it, rinsed it, did everything I need to do. By the way, do you rinse your beef? Do other people rinse beef? Some people do, some people don't. What do you do? Do you rinse your beef? Then I add some taco seasoning to it and some water and give that a good stir. And then I add a can of black beans. Now I do rinse, strain, drain that to my black beans. There's always that black goopy stuff in black beans. I get rid of that, add that to my beef. It really makes your beef go further. How many times can I say beef? But especially with it being so expensive lately. Okay, moving on. I am dicing up an onion since Bella wouldn't let me put it on the layer dip. She doesn't really like onions, so I totally understand. So I'll put the onion on my portion of the layer dip as well as inside of my taco. And here we go. We are doing tacos in a bag. So I take a bag of Doritos, I cut them open on the side, and then I give them a little squeeze to kind of break up the chips a little bit and then I add in the taco meat into both of our bags and then I let Bella just fill it up with whatever toppings she wants in hers and then I fill it up with whatever toppings I want in mine. Oh my gosh, I kind of want to go make tacos again. They're so delicious. So the things that we had on our plate were lettuce, tomatoes, sour cream, cheese, black olives, and then those onions. And then we can't forget about the layer dip that Bella made to go along with our tacos in a bag. So this was a really good dinner. For our next night's dinner, I wanted to have a vegetable salad. So this is a recipe my mom makes a lot for really big crowds, but it's also perfect for just Bella and I. So I start by slicing up some scallions. Now, no, I'm not going to use all of these scallions in the salad, but 
I figure if I can just prep ahead, I do. So you're going to see me doing that for a lot of the vegetables in the salad. I'm going to cut them up and only use half of them in the salad and save half for another dish. So the cauliflower, I'm chopping up the whole head, but I'm only putting in about half of it into the salad and the other half I'm going to put into another bowl and keep it in my fridge for the next night I'm going to make a vegetable broil so using the same types of ingredients for multiple different dishes and giving them a little extra spin is also perfect for Bella and I because a lot of times we don't like a lot of leftovers now the salad is actually better the next night so <laughs> if you can make it ahead go ahead and do it but it's also good 15 minutes later too. It's just a versatile, versatile salad. I'm going to add mushrooms to my salad and then also put the other half into the vegetable broil. So you see both of the bowls there. Uh, I know I've been told you shouldn't eat the mushrooms raw, but I like them raw. What can I say? So next I'm adding black olives. Now I don't add them to my veggie broil. I only add them to my salad. So I had to pick those out of there, but there they are black olives so yummy and then I also add some water chestnuts for some extra added crunch these they're so good if you haven't tried them give them a try they're so good and then I just sprinkle in some scallions a little bit of the white and a little bit of the green and then I do my broccoli now for the broccoli I'm also putting half in to my vegetable broil and half into my salad I actually may have done a little bit more than half into the broil because Bella loves broccoli broiled. Now this onion isn't for my salad at all because I added the scallions which is kind of like my oniony flavor but I typically like to chop my onion into really big chunks for the vegetable broil so I'm doing way more work right now than I need to be doing and I don't realize it until I'm basically done <laughs> chopping the onion and it kind of annoys me and bothers me while I'm doing I'm still kind of bothered by it to be honest. But if you're going to add these to your broil, I suggest really big chunks of onion. I don't know why. They're just so good in the broil. So the big ones I did end up pulling out and putting it into the vegetable mix uh, for the broil the next night. And then the little dinky ones I just chopped up and then set those aside for another dish later in the week as well. But the broil vegetables, I'm just going to put some uh, foil or plastic over top of them and put them right into my fridge. Now for the salad, all you're going to do is add some zesty Italian dressing and you can add as much or as little of this as you want. Honestly, you don't need a lot. A little goes a long way, but it's so good. And if you want to get really fancy, add some dill weed to it. Fresh dill weed or dried dill weed. Either one is good, but fresh is always better. But that's it. That's a simple salad, huh? Okay, our dinner came originally from a recipe, but I've switched a lot of things up. So here's my take on it. It's a potato stew. So I start by chopping up some potatoes into kind of biggish bites because I don't want them to turn into mashed potatoes, if you get me. And then I took an ear of corn and I cut the corn off of it. I know, don't come at me. It kind of breaks my heart to use corn like this too. Just buy a bag of frozen corn and don't waste corn on the cob. It's so good. Anyway, add a little bit of olive oil to your pan and then throw in your meat. You can use any meat. In fact, the recipe calls for pork. I'm using vegetable burgers I bought at Costco. They're actually kind of okay. I'll probably never rebuy them, but I'll eat them all until they're gone. So here I'm throwing them in to this stew, adding a couple teaspoons of chipotle seasoning. I actually couldn't find chipotle seasoning, so I'm using a chipotle marinade rub. It tastes great and ends up just fine. Then I threw in about a teaspoon of onion powder and a little bit of salt. Gave that all a good mix, and then I added that corn because the corn wasn't even cooked when I cut that off the cob. Isn't that weird? This is the only time I've ever done it for this recipe. Cut corn off a cob before cooking it. Strange. Then you can throw in your potatoes. At this point, I realized my fake meat <laughs> stuff was kind of sticking to the bottom of my pan. So I did end up putting in a little bit more of the extra virgin olive oil, but typically I've never had to do that. At this point, I throw in some of those scallions that I cut up for, you know, my salad. And I add in about a cup and a half of water and some concentrated chicken broth, give it a good mix. And then to thicken it up a little bit more, I mix together two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. 
I mix it until it's completely incorporated with each other. And then I pour it in. I usually do a couple spoonfuls at a time just until I get the consistency that I'm looking for. And then I add a couple dollops of sour cream to the very top and there you go. You have made yourself some stew. That is what we had for dinner. We paired it with that delicious vegetable salad and that was our dinner. Okay, now let's take a break and make a dessert. Okay, I wanna see if you can guess what I'm making for this dessert. It's graham crackers, I mashing them up. If you know, comment down below. If you don't know, I'll tell you at the end. Don't worry about it. I don't keep secrets here. So we are mashing them up. I am using a can now to mash them. Bella is using my meat tenderizer. I got that thing, it's super heavy. It's from Pampered Chef and I love it. But you're looking for super tiny little crumbs. You want them to look like sand. I divided them into two separate little bowls because I'm making this in my toaster oven. So I can't use a normal size cookie tray. So I'm using toaster oven sized <laughs> pans to make it. I split my butter in half. You need about one stick for the recipe. So I did a half of a stick in each pan, melted them, added my graham crackers, mixed the butter and the graham crackers together, and then smashed them down into the bottom of the pan. That's it so far. Did both pans, added some chocolate chips to both of them. I don't measure. I just go off of my I <laughs> so add as many chocolate chips as you want and then next we're going to add some butterscotch chips yes so delicious have you guessed what we're making yet okay we'll keep going after you've added the butterscotch chips you're going to take a can of creamy nope you're going to take a can of sweetened condensed milk and pour it over top now if you have divided yours into two separate pans like I have you're going to have to divide your sweet and condensed milk between the two pans as well otherwise just pour away on the whole pan oh my gosh can you even believe how good this looks okay we're not done we need to add one more layer and the last layer is our coconut oh my gosh so we are using a sweetened coconut on one and an unsweetened coconut or a not sweetened coconut or just a normal coconut on the other and honestly it made no difference both of them turned out to be the same flavor Really, it made absolutely no difference. With the sweetened condensed milk, they're just good. Throw it into the oven at 350 and bake until it's kind of brownish like mine. I think my toaster oven took about 15 minutes. But anyway, look at them. That's it. This dessert is so good. Did you guess what it is? It's called Seven Layer Bars. But honestly, I don't think we did all the layers. So it's however many layers you put on their bars. But they're good. Okay, this next meal, we got a little bit of help from HelloFresh. Now, this is not sponsored. I do have links down below. I do get a little bit of credit if you click on my links, but they don't even know that I bought this. So, just letting you know, okay? We kind of cheated and got all of our stuff sent to us perfectly portioned. And the instructions are so easy. Bella made this whole meal almost by her entire self. I was just there for a little bit of time. Uh, she has put broccoli on one side of the pan and tossed it with some salt, pepper, and olive oil. And the other side, you can see the bacon. We tossed that right into our toaster oven at 425 and baked that for about 15 minutes until the bacon was nice and crispy and delicious and oh my gosh. Okay, so this is the part that I did. I reserved a cup of water and then she mixed it with a cheese roux that came in the box and some cream cheese and then once she had all of that mixed together she threw in her spaghetti and some garlic herb butter oh my gosh I I want to find where they buy their ingredients and just purchase their ingredients separately because they have really good stuff okay she also added some parmesan cheese as you saw gave that a quick little spin in the pan and and then threw in the broccoli and the bacon. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering right now just thinking about it. So anyway, she ended up throwing it onto plates for the both of us and topping it with a little bit more Parmesan cheese. And that was our meal. Okay, so we ended up having spaghetti a uh, second night in a row. So what are you going to do? It's pasta. It's good. We love it. But this one's totally different. So you're going to start by cutting up your bread. Cube it up. You can use any bread you want. This is just a baguette. You just want your bread to be a little bit stale. So maybe use the crust from bread uh, like sandwiches. We've done that quite a few times. Just any bread, just have it be a day or two stale. And then mix up some butter, garlic, and Parmesan cheese. 
and throw that right onto your bread. That's why you want it to be kind of stale so the bread doesn't really like soak it all in. But if you don't got stale bread, use whatever bread you got. And if you don't want to do the butter and the garlic and the parm, you don't have to be fancy either. Just use some olive oil. I've done that too. Then you're going to broil it. So throw it right into your oven. I'm using my toaster oven because I swear it's the only oven I ever use anymore. Kasori sent this to me and I love it. Kasori has sent me a lot of their products and there is not one yet that I have not fallen in love with. So, hey, Kasori, if you're watching, hit me up. I see you have a coffee thing. I kind of want to try your pour over coffee thing. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's move on. Um, not sponsored. <laughs> But I love Kasori products. Now we're moving on to the vegetables that we had kind of prepped the other day. So here's the deal. There's some things that I add later. Like you just saw me cut up that potato. We like adding potatoes to it. If there's any vegetables that you have on hand that you need to get rid of, throw them into the broil. Peppers are good in here. I'm trying to think of what wouldn't be good. Squash, zucchini, anything is good. And just add some garlic, olive oil, salt, and pepper, and that's it. Oh, and lemon juice. Throw some lemon juice in there too. It is so delicious. There's those dinky little onions that I cut up too small. Hmm. So disappointed in that. Okay, so you're going to wait for your bread to be done. As soon as your bread is done, uh, toasting up in the oven, take it out and then put the vegetables in there and let them just kind of broil at a high heat too until they are looking a little crispy. I usually go off of the broccoli. The broccoli will start to look kind of burnt, not really burnt, but really brownish, like on the ends, you want it to be kind of crispy. That's the texture you're going for. Okay, so now I'm making the sauce for my pasta. I added some butter in there, threw in some garlic, added some heavy whipping cream. This is not a healthy dinner, don't worry, it's not healthy at all, but you know, we're getting some vegetables, so we're going somewhere with it. Then you're gonna stir it all up. I add some Parmesan cheese, and this parm, I do the freshly grated stuff, the fancy stuff. Once you get that all mixed in there, if you need to, you can add a little bit of your pasta water to kind of thin it down, thick it up. I don't know what the pasta water actually does. I think it thins it. Add a little bit of your reserved pasta water to it and some lemon juice. Oh my gosh. Do a few taste tests. Sometimes you need to add a little bit more salt. Sometimes you don't. And then you're going to throw in your pasta. Let your pasta get all soaky, yolky in there and kind of stir it around so it's all fully coated. And then throw it into your bowl and top it with those croutons. Can you believe it? You're, isn't that weird? Okay, it's kind of not weird because I guess you eat garlic bread with like spaghetti all the time. I just find it weird that you put them right into your bowl. I don't know. That's always strange to me. But Bella and I both really love it. Pull out your broiled vegetables and you got yourself a delicious little dinner. Oh, it was so good. I wish you guys could come over and eat with us. Our last two meals this week were from HelloFresh and I did not record myself preparing either one because I really did not prepare much for either of them. Bella actually took the initiative and wanted to make the meals for us. So I was her little sous chef and she told me the things she needed help with, you know, the safety things, hot things and sharp things I kind of helped her out with. But she mostly did everything and she read the directions and told me how to do it. So it was a lot of fun preparing these meals with her and being her sous chef instead of her always being mine. And these tasted great. These were sweet potato poblano quesadillas. The only thing I would change in the future is I would not add any poblano pepper that was a little bit too hot for Bella and we would maybe just add extra sweet potato. I kind of felt like the sweet potato they sent us was a little dinky, but anyway, that's what we ended up having that night, and then the following night, we had spaghetti again. Can you even believe that we would have spaghetti three times in a row or in the same week? I mean, honestly, I can believe it. We love pasta. This one had zucchini and sausage in it, and it was so good. Uh, Bella ended up plating it for me. She wanted it to look like the pitcher, and then she put that little heart decoration in there for me. It was so good. I think food is better if you're not the one preparing it all the time too. So the fact that Bella pretty much took over and made almost all of it. Uh, yeah, big props to Bella. She's becoming a great little cook and I'm loving it. 
So anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you'd please give me a like down below. If you are still watching this and you are not yet subscribed, what are you doing? <laughs> what can I do to get you to subscribe? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in our next video. Bye!